Hello guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing the second part of how to build uh, an audio visualizer in Roblox. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to want to do is we need a sound. So if you followed the previous tutorial, you'll probably already have a sound inside sound service or workspace, wherever you prefer. Now, the next thing is we're going to need a local script. So we're going to do a very similar thing like we did with the ball visualizer. I'm going to go here. I'm going to put a local script inside of starter player scripts. I'm going to put a object value inside of that local script. I'm going to name the local script bar visualizer. And I'm going to name the object value music. Now, the name of the script isn't really that important, so you can really name that whatever you want. But the name of the object value is very important. You can name it whatever you want, as long as you use that exact same name inside of the script. That being said, let's continue. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the run service. So I'm going to start by saying local run s equals game get service run service. The next thing I'm going to do is define three variables that are going to control how this bar visualizer looks. The first of these is going to be the number of bars. So local num bars equals 15. We're going to have 15 bars for now. The next value is going to be the width of each bar. So local bar width equals 2. It's going to be 2 for now. And the final value is going to be the thickness of the visualizer. So local thickness equals 2. We're also going to have that be 2 for now. The next thing we want to do is create a model to store all of these parts in. I'm going to call that visualizer. So local visualizer oops, equals instance dot new model. We're going to create a new model. And the next thing I want to do is define a, a uh, position for this visualizer, right? Where do I want the visualizer to be located? So local visualizer position equals vector 3.new 0, 0, 0. I'm going to put this visualizer in the center of the map at the origin. The next thing I want to do is define a starting position for the first bar. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, because of the way that this visualizer works, right? It is a uh, it's a bunch of different parts. That means we can't just set the position of this visualizer to this, right? This position is going to be the position of the center part. So, what we need to do is we need to find a way that we can place these parts such that the sort of average position of all the parts is equal to this. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to define a starting position. So local starting position equals the visualizer position minus vector 3.new and then inside of the x-axis I'm going to put the number of bars times the bar width. I'm going to divide that by 2 and then I'm going to subtract half of the bar width and then for the other two values we can put 0. Now what this is doing and this is we're basically saying okay I want the first part to be at the total length of all the bars combined divided by 2 minus the length of a single bar divided by 2. And that's going to, we're going to offset from the initial position or from the center position by this value. And you'll see that in action a little bit later once we actually place these bars down, which we're going to do right now. So I'm going to start by writing a for loop, which is going to create all of these parts. So for i, oops, i equals 0, comma, the number of bars minus 1, 1, do. So we're creating a variable i, setting that equal to 0 at first, and we want to run up until number of bars minus 1. 
So this is going to start at 0. It's going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up until 14 for this particular situation. Now you'll see why we do that in a second. You know, you could do i equals 1 num bars, but I'll show you why exactly I chose to subtract 1 here in a second. So let's go ahead and create our first bar. So local b equals instance. Oops, instance.new part. Let's go ahead and make that uh, non-collidable. Let's go ahead and anchor that. Next, we want to set the size of that bar. So b.size equals vector3.new. Remember, we said the x-axis, the width, is going to be bar width. Oops. So we can go ahead and say bar width. And then the y it doesn't really matter because we're going to be changing that um, depending on the loudness of the audio. So we can just put something like 1 for now. And then the thickness is the size of each bar on the z-axis, which ends up being the sort of thickness of the visualizer. Now we want to set the position of this bar. So b.position equals the starting position plus vector3.new i times bar width, comma, 0, comma, 0. Now, what exactly is this doing? So we said the starting position is offset from the visualizer position by half of the total length of the bars minus half the length of a single bar. Now, this means that when we're placing the bars, if we place them such that each bar is offset by bar width from the previous bar, then we will end up such that the center of the entire model is visualizer position. And you'll see that in a second when we actually run this. Now the final thing I'm going to want to do is set the material of each bar to make it look nice. I'm going to set that to enum.material dot neon for now. And the last thing we want to do is put the bar in the visualizer. So b dot parent equals visualizer. And then finally we can set visualizer dot parent to be equal to workspace. So right now if I go here and I run this, I go ahead and hit play, I should see this row of bars here. And if I go in here and I sort of go through each of these bars, you can see that they're each their own separate part. And if you take note of this property right here, the position, when we go through, we eventually see that one of the parts has its position at 0, 0, 0. And remember, that is the visualizer position right here. So the entire model is sort of expanding from that center point. Let me just zoom in here. So now that we've done that, we've completed the first and probably the hardest part of this whole thing. The final thing we need to do is actually animate this visualizer. Now this is very simple, and if you watched the previous tutorial, uh, it's going to be a very similar process. So we're going to start by getting this music. And remember, we created an object value, named it music. Now there's one more thing we have to do here. I want to set the value of this music to be equal to the sound object that we want to listen to. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on value. I'm going to go down to the sound, and I'm going to click again. And that's going to set the value to the sound. Now, I'm going to create a reference to that object value. I'm going to say local music value oops, value equals script colon wait for child music. The next thing I'm going to want to do is create a function that's going to get called every frame to update this visualizer. So local function update visualizer. Oops, I cannot type today. And we're going to put dt in there. Next thing we're going to want to do is connect that function 
to the heartbeat event inside of run service. And now if you remember from the previous tutorial, the heartbeat event is called once every frame. Now this allows us to run code every frame. So let's go ahead and do that. So run s dot, uh, not render sept, heartbeat, colon connect, update visualizer. So we're connecting this function to this event. Now, let's think about what we actually want to do here. We want to first get the playback loudness of this, right? See how loud the sound is. Then we want to change the size of each individual bar depending on that size. Now, we don't want each bar to be the same height because then that won't create an audio visualizer effect. That will just create, right, you know, it'll just look like a rectangle that's expanding. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the loudness. So I'm going to say local L equals music value dot value dot playback loudness. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking my reference to the music thing, which is here. I'm getting the value of it, right? The value, which points to this here. And I'm getting the playback loudness of this music here. Okay. Now I'm going to loop through each of the bars in the visual in the visualizer. So I'm going to create a for loop for i comma bar in pairs visualizer colon get children two. So for each bar in the visualizer's children, I'm going to set bar dot size equal to bar dot size colon lerp and then as you know or as you may not know but as I explained in the previous tutorial lerp takes in two values it takes in the goal and it takes in the alpha now the goal is going to be the position that is the end and the alpha is going to be the sort of percentage of the distance that we need to travel between point A and point B. And this is going to be a value between 0 and 1. So let's start by putting the first value, which is the goal. Where do we want this bar size to be? Well, we want it to be at a vector3.new bar.size.x, right? Because we don't want to change the x size of the bar. Next, I'm going to put L times in parentheses math dot random 0 100 and I'm going to divide that by 100 and then I'm going to put bar dot size dot C now what exactly does this do well we know we have a loudness value and that's how loud the sound is so that's going to control how big or how small our visualizer is going to be. But I also noted previously that we don't want the size of each bar to be the same. Now the way I'm changing this is I'm getting a random value between 0 and 100 and I'm dividing that by 100. So that's going to give me a value between 0 and 1 out to two decimal places, so out to the hundredths, all right? Because if you think about it, if you get a value of 0, 0 over 100 is 0. And if you get a value of 100, that's going to be 100 over 100, which is 1. And something like 50, you know, 50 over 100, you get 1 over 2, which is 0.5. So basically any value in there will give you some sort of value over 100, which will give us a decimal. Now, the last thing we need to do is remember I said lerp takes in two parameters. And the second parameter is going to be a value between 0 and 1, which determines how far between the start and the end we go. Now in the previous tutorial, I know I keep saying the previous tutorial a lot, but that's because I went over a lot of useful information in the previous tutorial. But what I did was I said that this value is equal to 1 minus some value. Uh, we can say 0 0.01 for now. And we raise that second value to the power of delta time. And that is right here. 
and that's given to us by the heartbeat event when we connect the function. So if you want to understand why exactly we put this here, you can go ahead, go over to my previous tutorial, and go ahead and watch that. So now, let's go ahead and play our game. Let's go ahead and play the music. So as you can see, it's a bit bigger than we'd like it to be. Now if you remember, what we have to do to fix this is simply multiply this value by some constant or divide it by some constant. So I'm going to multiply it by some value that is less than 1. Now let's go with 0 0.01 for now. And that's going to shrink this value and that's going to shrink the overall size of the visualizer. So let's go ahead and play this time and see if it's any different. Now we notice that it's a bit too small. So we go back here. Well, I can increase this. Maybe 0 0.075 will do better. So that's a lot better. That's more like what we'd expect. So now there's a lot of things you could do with this code. You could change the number of bars, the width of the bars, and the thickness. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I change the number of bars. I'm going to make 30 bars instead of 15 bars. Let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, it's a lot longer. And we go in here and we can see that there's a lot more parts in here. There should be 30. If you count them up, there should be 30 parts in here. Now, go ahead and play. You can see it works the exact same as before, except with more bars. Now, you know, we could let's try decreasing bar width to 1. Let's see what happens if we do that. So, it looks basically the same as it did the first time, but we should see that there are still 30 parts. And if we play, you can see that there's a lot more individual lines. Now what happens if we change the thickness? So let's make this 5. So as you can see, it becomes a lot thicker on the z-axis. Let's go ahead and play that. So now, you can go ahead and play around with these values. You can make them whatever you want. You know, bar width 5, number of bars, you know, 25. Go ahead and run this. So yeah, you could really make these whatever you want. I recommend going in here, changing whatever you'd like, really making this your own. You could mess around with these values, you know, change the amount of bars, change the width, change the thickness. You could change the size, and you could change the speed at which it animates. So if you don't understand how to do that, once again, you could go ahead and look at my previous tutorial. So that pretty much concludes this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video. I'll do my best at trying to get back to them. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel because I will be uploading more tutorials like this in the future. So I'd like to thank you for watching and good luck on your Roblox developing journey.